hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris, and it's the Rock Metal Podcast. We have Smoking Martha. They just released a new single called Liquid Sunshine. I've also had the privilege of getting a hello from another single that the band has, which is also a banger of a track, and then we'll get into potentially some other details, so stay tuned. Right now, I'm being joined by Mick to share some more information about Liquid Sunshine, as well as what Smokey Martha's got coming up on the horizon. So, Mick, welcome to the show. Hey, mate. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, ugh, I figured out this computer, so it's good. Yeah. You figured out the computer. You're in a, a soundproof room. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy closet. Yeah, thanks, thanks to the addition of <laughs> one million dresses. <laughs> so that's good. Take us through this track, Liquid Sunshine, because I mean, I can make my own assumptions, or maybe it's just a funny play on words. But what is Liquid Sunshine? I could call this San Pellegrino Liquid Sunshine. Yes, well, that's what we like to. The rest of us like to call think the song's about beer. Well, we tell everyone it is. Tosh probably would tell you different, but um, she's it's more like uh, it's the what is she? It's like the love of the sea, the sun, and it's kind of like the memories of a young love over an endless summer. It's kind of how she puts it. We like to go, oh yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It sounds like it's a beer commercial, so that's kind of <laughs> how we run it. <laughs> You know, when you mentioned memories of a young love over the endless summer, I immediately went to Boys of Summer. Ah, uh, yep. Um, where, uh, what is it, unrequited love that he's chasing the entire summer in a very creepy way where he's driving by your house. <laughs> it was a very creepy way. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's singing along, yeah, I drove by your house last night. Anybody else singing this? Yeah, like yeah you're like, hang on. I was like standing out the front. Like all those cre- all those eighties movies, they're all like, yeah, they're pretty much stalker movies. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was what made the eighties great, though. <laughs> yeah, you could stalk, you could stalk anyone, didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you could stalk people, you could treat people terribly. It was it was good times, you know. Yeah, everyone still falls in love, and it's you know it's a great time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Speaking of a great time, I'm watching the music video for. Liquid Sunshine, which, of course, you guys managed to find an orange room, so immediately it's just like, yeah, Liquid Sunshine, I get it. Orange room, I got it. <laughs> Take us through this music video. How did you guys end up making this guy? Is room orange, or is that just a, a light? Is that a filter? Uh, yeah, I think it's a, so it's a bit of a filter. So we, um, what our mate Tyson, he's sort of done a few, like most of our videos now. He, um, where he works out of is like a, a, like a white studio room. So it's like just complete white. So we got, um, yeah, I think we had like, bun- we got a bunch of different lights and just started trying them out. And then that orange sort of hue seemed to seemed to pick really well. So we kind of kept that. And then he just uh, he just with his magical editing skills mm-hmm. was able to blow it out a bit and make it you know look a whole lot cooler than what we thought we were doing so hey, yeah it worked out pretty good <laughs> just looking at each other like guys is this <laughs> yeah are we cool is this we... this is pretty rad hey yeah yeah yeah, yeah we're right and he's like no nah, guys you suck this, you need to do it better like this <laughs> exactly you know speaking of the 80s i don't know if uh if she did this on purpose but i'm getting blondie flashbacks from from tasha here in this music video with the giant hoop earrings yeah and, and yep. everything yeah no nah, she's had a yeah, she does. She definitely like, is a bit of a Blondie fan. So, yeah, that would definitely come through for sure. <laughs> okay. So, it's being taken as a compliment. That is fantastic. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Good. Now, as a guitar player, I'm zooming in on your gear. It looks like we got a Marshall 1960A cab with a 6505 plus and a Les Paul something or other with what kind of pickups you got in that bad boy? Uh, just the original ones, like the, so the, the I think the, the P90s, I think something like that in that bad boy. But um, that's actually Maddie's our bass player's guitar. So mine, mine was a, a little bit junked out now. So oh. I've been st- stealing his shit and <laughs> using that because it's better. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, like most bass players, he probably runs a pawn shop as well. So, yeah, yeah you got to get by. Yeah, no one gives bass players gifts, you know, on stage, so Mm-mm. he has to sell shit for it. <laughs> exactly. Other than the three girls he calls girlfriends, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and come over and do laundry and just make sure that there's you know no scheduling conflicts or whatever. 
<laughs> he's got yeah, he's got to be really precise with that, sort it out like that. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I guess what's the gear that we're hearing on the recording? What do you like? What's your sound? Yeah. So I did. So we used a lot of um, used a few different heads. We used like a uh, there's a guy here called Dale Sherlock. He builds custom heads. So we ran that um, that was a fit like on there a fair bit. Um, that 6505 was actually on there a fair bit. Like with the we actually just turned the thing up loud as all hell, but then backed off the backed off the gain a lot, and it sort of actually sounded really good. Um, we used we used that guitar for probably majority of the recording actually, and a uh, couple of uh, couple of like Fender Telecasters for some sprinkly magic bits in there, which mm-hmm. al- always makes it sound nice. And I think we might have used like a Gibson three 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 five, I think on parts as well. But that that were the main ones we sort of ran, and then the. Uh, uh, Studio guy Luke Luke Palmer. He has like this. Mo- he's in a bit of a prog band, and he's got like this monster pedal board, which had like everything Naturally. that you could think of on there. <laughs> so we used that. I think there was a, a Pog or no. He's got the Hog version. So we used that that little thing like on a fair bit of stuff, just like really dialed back and just just pushed in there to give it the tone a little bit more like dirt in there as well. But like just this little weird sound to it, so that was pretty. That was pretty fun using that stuff. I I got to like play the guitar while he did all the foot stuff, so I, I get confused real easy. So I will keep that shit away from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it looks like you're plugged straight in. Are you more of like a straight in kind of guy? Yeah, you, pretty much up until this album, and then after using his board, then I was like, shit, now I need to get some of those pedals <laughs> to. Yeah. to make it sound so i've kind of got i got a um one of those switcher was it pb uh pbs mastermind um switcher pedal so that and probably like about half a dozen of those of the pedals that we used on there now and then i just run it through the switcher so i can just push one button and not have to tap dance Mm -hmm. that suits me really really fine (laughs) less stuff less confusing very true what is (laughs) Going down the the rabbit hole that is uh, pedals, what is probably the most? Uh, what's what I'm looking for? The one pedal that's now on your board that like you yep. you, you couldn't get rid of it if you tried. If somebody said, "I'll um, buy that off of you for a million dollars," and you'd be like, "No." Yeah, um, probably. What do I reckon? The I reckon the probably the Pog that I've got now, because even though it's not, I don't like. I pretty much use it on everything, but either really dialed back or like wild sounds out of it. It just seems to like just add something a little, a little bit more to everything. So now it's, it's kind of like now I'm using it like bloody Kirk Hammett uses a wire pedal, probably too much, mm-hmm. but it's all right. Yeah, exactly. Sounds good. I'm looking that up. Okay, cool. So uh, an Octaver basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very cool stuff. Classic. Legendary. I like that you mentioned the magic unicorn sparkly bits that Telecasters can do, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Gibson 335, for those out there who are currently just listening in and not able to look it up, that is what, a uh, semi-hollow body? Yeah. Yep. That's right. What does that just guy do? Kind of just, I guess it has like a, it's hard to describe, but I, I sort of think of it as like a rounder sound, like a, a bit more uh, bigger, rounder, still really, still gives that real punch, but like just got like a more, I don't know, over encompassing sound, like just, just seems to fill out, fill out parts really good, like big chords. It just like has huge sound with that. So I feel like that, yeah, that sort of really worked well, like adding chords, big chords behind stuff that was just like really perfect for it. So I actually bought now live. I have a Duesenberg, um, which is a guitar brand from Germany, and it's a semi semi hollow body as well. And um, that sort of has a bit of that's like cross between the Les Paul um, and the three three five as well. So it kind of sits in the middle of those live. So I'm able to get most pretty much most of that sound live, which is good mm-hmm. yeah. with one guitar. 
with one guitar. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. Well, after all this teetering and tottering and experimenting and doing cool things, has that changed yep. your approach to the rehearsal room slash, you know, the stage? Yeah. So I guess, yeah, I guess we sort of worked a fair bit on it. And yeah, I was like, cause I, I don't like to have to jump around changing stuff. Like I said before. So we are able to, of that Jusenberg seems to fill the hole, get most of the time, pretty much most of the stuff down with that guitar. And then we now with that, now with having a pedal board and that I, with the switcher, I'm able to get pretty much my, pretty much all those tones in a really nice, easy, compact without having to like, run around change amps do stuff you know we try and keep it as simple as possible we don't we don't run like any any backing tracks or anything like that so we pretty much if there you know we, there might be a little bit we take the main guitar part out of everything and run with that and we have a pretty big sound live anyway so it's kind of like we'd probably live we're probably just that little bit more rawer which we prefer anyway when we play live. So, you know, you can listen to the CD. Live, we still sound pretty much the same, but just a bit raw, a bit, and it's just like you get the CD sound and then you get, like, the live sound. And it's cool to have that little bit of difference as well where it gives you that more energy, you know. It's cool to have, like, not be exactly all the time because you get bored doing that as well, chasing that exact thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I do anyway. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> just watch you kick a mop bucket and pretend the mop was a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> See? Simple things. <laughs> it, it is It is the simple things. Well, and speaking of, you know, going back to 80s pop culture, the music video for Good Girls is screaming the 80s to me right now. Yeah. Yeah, massively. <laughs> just, um, I don't know, it felt, we're trying to have some, gets, like, the, the song's got that little bit of a punk vibe, bit of, um, yeah, you know, I think again a bit of like a, a like a bit of a maybe a heavier blondie sort of vibe to it, and um, yeah, it just seemed like that that seemed like a fun idea to do. We had a, we got access to having a roller rink, so and the and um, the girl was like amazing. So we were like, well, Miles will take this opportunity to have a crack at this, and everyone got to act like actually do some acting, which is terrible, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I think my favorite guy is the old guy. <laughs> yeah, that's actually um, that's Maddie's dad, so <laughs> Paulie. So yeah, he's pretty happy. He's like famous. He's like, I'm on Rage. I'm on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and everybody's got the the green stuff. Was that absinthe coming out of the nipples? Yeah, um, yeah. It was actually what is it? Midori. I don't know if you guys have that over there. The um, it's like a, I think what is it? I think it was a big drink in the 90s over here like it was a cocktail everyone was always had midori splice or something like that mm-hmm. it's basically tastes like really bad like melon flavor i could see that for sure <laughs> uh absinthe itself doesn't taste very good i had it in europe yeah okay mm. here it is the original melon liqueur yeah that's the one good god okay i don't know if i want to get on board or not no, nah, I probably wouldn't if I was you. It's not that good. <laughs> I, I imagine not. A melon liqueur, that's what the world needs. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need more of in this day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> melon liqueur. Well, you know, the funny thing is I went to culinary school, so I learned about a lot of these sorts of liqueurs and liquors and wines and beers and obviously using them quite a bit in different dishes and classic dishes. Melon liqueur, that just hasn't come up on my... Didn't come up, yeah. <laughs> no. Makes, but, yeah. Well, if it doesn't come up in culinary class, you know, it's can't, it can't be too good. <laughs> no. You know no we have nothing at all that will match with this, so we'll just leave this on the side. <laughs> yeah. You know that classic oyster dish that calls for Midori. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Good girls. Is Tasha one of the good girls? What's going on in this, in um, this song? Yeah, I think... Nah, I don't know. <laughs> nah, she, it's kind of like... Her take on that was kind of like the world... Like a, what she, like it's a bit of a playful take at like being at war with yourself. I think she is the way she described it. Um, you know, and at the time, you know, the world sort of falling apart, and it's kind of like, well, let's kind of go down with it. You know, th- having a swing on the way down was kind of the the vibe of the song, I believe. 
Okay, sorry. I you sounded like yeah. you were going to keep going, and so I. Oh no, I ran out of words. <laughs> 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 I'm going to use that from now on. I'm going to be talking to somebody and I'll just stop yeah, and they'll be like, what? I'm like, sorry, I ran out of words. Yeah. There's just no more. <laughs> yeah. It's just, sorry. That's, that's, that's where I end. Uh, <laughs> cool. Now the big honking questions, we got liquid sunshine. We got good girls. Yeah. Is this part of, cause Zelon entertainment is involved. Yep. Yep. Are they releasing singles as part of an album? Yeah. So that, yep, that's it. So we've put out two singles now. Uh, we have an album coming out the 3rd of December. So that, yeah, so that's called Universe, the album. Um, yeah, 3rd of December, and I believe we'll be putting out a, another single um, probably around, you know, maybe just a bit before it or around the same time, I think, is the plan by the magic people in the background. Mm-hmm. I yep. believe, but um, yeah, so pretty pretty pumped about that. It's been a long time coming, especially for us. Like I think we we wrote most of the stuff probably in 2019. Yeah, it was 2019. So we wrote everything, got in the studio, recorded it towards the end, and then had plans to put it out. And then obviously everything went crazy, and um, oh. so we <laughs> we've been sort of sitting on it for a while, trying to figure out best way to go forward and like then it's like then, like in australia went crazy yeah like like we like we didn't cop it as bad as the rest of the world really like the pandemic stuff but as far as like the amount of cases but to like guess the plan to keep on top of it was to shut it all down so everything kind of you know like everywhere as well gets shut down we've been we're in like we keep we're always in these like snap lockdowns so you get like told on the friday no, the Saturday morning at ten that it, that it's locked down at four, so it kind of everything just goes whoosh, whoosh, in and out, in and out. So everything gets shut down. You know, it looks like it, it's going ahead, and then that afternoon it's not. So it's and each like between Sydney, Melbourne, and here, it seems to be everyone has each state has a different time. So it'll be like, oh, now they're shut down, so you can't go there anyway. And then they open up, and then we're shut down. So yeah, a bit of a Bit of the old wild wild ride going on, but mm-hmm. everyone's going through it and everyone's get you know, we're on the back end, hopefully, of it. Yeah. At least nearly. <laughs> well, we're in wave number four here in Canada and uh, yeah. I'm already over it. I'm ready for wave five and six, Mick. Yeah, just let them come. <laughs> just let them let them come. I got my surfboard. So Yeah. <laughs> just get swinging out there, have a punch on them, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Cause I heard, I read recently. I don't know how true it is, but I, I give like three months on this one if it's true that they, a new variant was discovered in Japan that bypasses all vaccinations. So, yeah, right. So <sighs> that's that sounds that sounds exciting and fun, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, go back into quarantine because that's all we can do at that yeah. point. Yeah. So that yeah, I think that's what I think we've we've had the our vac our vaccine rollout was a bit behind the times. So I think we're just catching up, starting to catch up with that. And then, yeah, now we get the, I guess we get this Japanese one and be like, haha, sorry guys. Yeah. Back to the start. Back to where we began to get the Midori. <laughs> yeah, just buy cases of that. Just buy cases. You case- remember nothing. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants it, so cases are cheap. Yeah. And uh, bring up your favorite 80s movies with your favorite 80s soundtracks. Yeah, grab a just, Telecaster <laughs> and sprinkle the magic on everything. <laughs> sprinkle the magic on everything with a an octave pedal. <laughs> Very cool. I'll Tele- just stay in this closet. Yeah, you'll be safe. <laughs> yep. Uh, what can you tell about this album, Universe? What did you guys set out to do with this record? You said you started writing, um, had it like you know pretty much done in 2019 or whatever. But what did you guys set out to do? I guess for this one. Well, when we did our first one, we the actual first album we went in to record uh, EP and then it sounded so like it was so good and we were talking to people and they're like, oh, don't waste it on an EP, do an album. So we'd kind of, first one was kind of split. So we went in and recorded five tracks and then a couple of months, like probably like four months later, we re- read another five, put them together sort of thing. So it was a bit of a chop, chop, you know, wasn't as consistent. Whereas I felt like this album, we actually wrote it all as, you know, to be on the album. So it was kind of a lot more consistent, a lot more, um, I guess, the song sort of... We were able to set that... The, there's 12 tracks, and we were able to set it up so it plays like an album, 
you know, we got like an intermission sort of bluesy kind of um, just guitar and mic and vocals sort of like, you know, real low key sort of right smack bang in the middle, like a palate cleanser sort of thing. And um, got a f- bit of keys on a couple of songs towards the end as well to sort of give it a bit, you know, a bit more space and a bit bigger. So, yeah, it was good. We were able to like, I guess, write a Pete, you know, like a whole bunch of songs, but we could, we were able to focus on writing a whole piece, which was, you know, real fun for us and got to stretch us a little bit. So we got like, you know, the rock and bangers and then some bit more, you know, proggy elements, I guess, in some of it and a bit more, yeah, like we got some piano and oh, have we got violins on this. I think there's a couple of little bits like that in there, pieces here ev- everywhere. So, yeah, it was a bit of fun. We got, yeah, just really got to stretch out a bit more, spend more time in the studio. So I think we were in there for a month wow. all up between everybody, like week on drums. I think it was two, like, week and a half or so on guitar. I think Maddie spent, like, maybe a day on bass. That's all you need. <laughs> just, sma- just smashes it, does a song in a take. It's just cheek, one of those cheeky dudes. Everyone else was like, oh, shit, this is hard. I was like, oh, I finished like five minutes ago. <laughs> and then, yeah, I got to spend a lot of good time, on, a lot of time on the vocals, which was really good as well. So everyone got a good amount of time doing stuff so we could experiment a little bit more. So, yeah, it was really good. Actually, it was a really fun, really good, um, really good time to do it. And just, yeah, have that actual goal of putting out doing an album as opposed to before was just like yeah we got some songs bang oh shit let's put some more songs together okay yeah there it is it's good <laughs> yeah you had a lot more focused i guess yeah well you mentioned uh having like some strings and, and whatnot um are they real real strings did you guys book yeah yeah so um we had an, oh no actually i'm mistaken not this time it's just the the com- I think there might have been some compu- computer strings <laughs> underneath it just to like flesh some bits out. But we actually, it was the last album we actually got um, a guy in the US. He did, yeah, so he recorded like three, like I think it was th- like cello, violin and so- and I don't know what the other one's called in between. And um, yeah, he, re- he recorded all that to one of our songs and that was really cool. This time I think we might have used cheated to save money and then um but the piano stuff maddie wrote maddie wrote the piano stuff and then um we recorded it oh uh, yeah we recorded that on the p- it was yeah on a proper piano as well so we got some real instrument there and a couple of cheats so mm-hmm. that's all right yeah. the real stuff outweighs the cheating of course everybody knows that <laughs> sweet okay so as a recap mick we chatted about Two banger tracks with music videos. Music yep. video links are going to be in today's show notes. So you can go ahead and go over to smokingmartha.com, which will be available in the links below in today's show notes, as well as the two music videos available on YouTube, Liquid Sunshine and Good Girls. Also off the cuff, we chatted about 80s pop music, 80s pop movie references, Fender Telecasters, guitar effects pedals, and Midori uh, Melon Liqueur. And then there was... In- <laughs> album coming out via Zelon Entertainment on December 3rd called Universe that will be available everywhere that you consume music. So Mick, that's all my questions. Awesome. Thank you for asking me all these questions. It was, this was a fun time sitting in the closet chatting to you yeah. on the other side of the world. It's pretty rad. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually you'll have to come out of the closet, Mick. I know, but you know, Tom Cruise was, couldn't do it, so some people can't just can't just get it out of that closet. But I think I'll make it. <laughs> yeah, well, here Australia is fairly progressive. Yeah, I think so. You know, they let you do things most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, unless it's Mortal Kombat 11. <laughs> then you get a little koala that says you can't watch this in Australia. Yeah, and then it drops on you. Mm-hmm. Tries to claw you. All right. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. Uh, Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. (laughs) 